Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ken Smith. I'm privileged to serve as the mayor of the city of Bader. I officially welcome all of you and, uh, for the time that you're taking to be uh, present with us at this regularly scheduled city council meeting. And I'm grateful to have our uh, newly elected uh, uh, legislative and council members here as well this evening. I would officially call this meeting to order on uh, at 6 p.m. on uh, this um, the 25th of January 2018. <clears throat> Let's proceed now with our roll call. Okay, Judy Costello here. Jason Daly here. Joe Shy here. Mike Parsons here. Leona Sander Hunter here. <laughs> Mayor Smith <laughs> also present. Right. I wrote it down. Oh, you did this <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a quorum, of course, so let's uh, now uh, proceed uh, with our Pledge of Allegiance. We we'll invite all to please rise. Oh. <coughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> uh, well, <coughs> with that, we'll proceed with our mayor's report. <coughs> and um, uh, the first item on your agenda is uh, acknowledgement to um, um, one of our outstanding employees, you know, Diane Floyd, uh, who recently um, received. Um, a, a career enhancement uh, of employment opportunity, and um, uh, we're ready now to uh, take that moment of our time this evening to recognize her for uh, the uh, service that she's rendered to our community. So it's my uh, great privilege to engage in this. So, Diane, I'd like you to come forward. <coughs> <laughs> the audience here. <clears throat> um, we have a, a, a plaque to um, um, convey to her uh, in appreciation for her service rendered, and I would like to read that. Uh, from the City of Vader, presented January 25th, 2018, to Diane A. Floyd. The City of Vader presents this award in recognition of exemplary performance and dedication of duties and responsibilities as the City of Vader Deputy Clerk from 2012 to 2017. So, a congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Would you like to share? Oh, for once in a We'll do our share. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we're in this picture too. Yeah, we're all in this photo. There you go. Right. Keep your photo bombing, no fun yeah. years or anything like that. Yeah, you'll have to I wait for the paper. I would say what a privilege it was to work here. Um, I came in at, uh, Valentine's Day 2012, and um, Jill and I just started on this big journey. She had been trying to do the job herself, and um, as I progressed, the job grew and grew and grew, and um, so I really enjoyed it here. I had so much fun with you guys and getting to meet the public and made a lot of good friendships. So I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Well, Sorry for standing to you backwards there. But <laughs> She really did make a remarkable difference in our community. So thank you. Uh, and best of luck to you in the future. <coughs> okay, um, I did uh, would like to uh, bring to your attention uh, another uh, opportunity for the members of the council. And um, we recently got a notice from a member of the Lewis County Economic Development uh, Council inviting uh, members of uh, the City of Bader and or elected City Council members to a special dinner that's going to be taking place on, in the, uh, I think it's the 23rd. Did you know the exact date of that uh, Economic Development Council dinner? Oh, uh, I... By any chance? No. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Well, um, I thought I had it in my pile of papers, but of course it's... Um, it's February something. Right. Wait, I 
think I see it. I found it. Oh, you found it. It's actually a kind of a big deal, and um, uh, it's $45 per person, uh, and they would uh, love the city of Bader to sponsor a, a table of eight, which would um, run $350. <laughs> So, with something of a discount, you can get eight people to be there. <clears throat> uh, but um, uh, they would need to have an RSVP for this by tomorrow. So, uh, I know it's a short notice, but I just uh, let, uh, let you know of this um, opportunity. And if any of you are interested, uh, let me know. Okay. And we have a flyer for it. It now, interferes with our council meeting. What's the date? Oh, yeah, it's February 8th, Doesn't Thursday. It? Oh, that one. What time? It's at the same yeah, time as our council meeting. It is our second mm -hmm. council meeting. That's our first and, council meeting. Yeah, we can't have a council meeting there, of course. No. Well, why not? Maybe we should try. <laughs> <laughs> You're all invited. You come to our table. We'll have two tables. <laughs> we have a comment from the public on this. Mm -hmm. Care to hear from? Sure. Okay, go ahead, Julie. My question is this. It's been done in the past, and I don't see why it couldn't be done again. If that is so important that you need to go, why can't you move the city council meeting for one week? It's entirely possible. That is my proposal. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Something to uh, consider. Okay. Now, I, I, I fail to acknowledge that we have um, our distinguished county commissioner, Bobby Jackson, with us again for a second meeting in a row. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> you're, you're, you're rising up. Oh, that's right, Dave. It's, it's uh, highly unusual to have such important figures with us. Uh, have you been to that event before? Uh, it's what I'm thinking about is the general membership. Is it is it the dinner? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's the membership dinner they held once a year. Yes, it is. Um, so, yes, I have been to that event. It's a nice event. Okay. So, you, you have um, some testimonial of it. <clears throat> well, with that, uh, then I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Um, okay. Then uh, that uh, concludes the mayor's report. Now let's um, proceed with the council report. If any of you have... Okay. Proceed to the left. Obviously. Here we go. Um, Take care of that today. <clears throat> At our last meeting, Mrs. Rogers had a comment about the, um, and I'll call it interlocal sewer fund loan, yes. and it requested, um, she had questions, um, so I took it upon myself to get her a copy of the um, and give it to her. <clears throat> the ordinance? Ordinance, or thank you yes. very much. Yes. Just totally went over my head. <laughs> A copy of the ordinance, which um, um, Donna now has, and if she has any more questions, then um, I've invited her to uh, speak with us at any time that she like about it. Um, and then the second thing is, is um, this was in reference to the letter um, that, that um, we discussed from the possible class action lawsuit you brought up. Um, I have no legal expertise, but kind of wanted to share with my fellow council people that I really saw, I did not see anything legal burden about it, and hope that maybe our legal counsel will shed some light on it when we get that opportunity. Sure. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you haven't uh, had an opportunity yet to look at that, um, the letters that are being referred to, you'll note, uh, as I have, that um, there is no um, official request on the part of the entity involved for any response. Mm -hmm. So it was more of an opinion letter. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Are you talking about the ACLU letter, or are you talking about... No, I was about... referring to the, okay, the, you're one referring the, the, to the mayor public held records up. request. Correct. Oh, okay. The one the mayor held yeah. up uh, two weeks ago. That's what I thought sure. maybe you were talking about. Okay. I was confused. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was the one that I you I hope that you all had a chance to look at that. Suggestion. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have something for the... I, I failed to mention at the last... Uh, meeting at the, the Little Crane and the Lions Club. We gave out 22 baskets for Christmas this year. Um, and I wanted to say a special thanks to all the donators um, financially and with 
wrap presents and food and, and also for the volunteers that helped that day. It was, it was a very successful day. I think that was very cool. That is outstanding. Such a positive reflection on our community. That guy that runs Little Crane, he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah. Sorry, did you say that was the Little Crane and the Lions Club together? Mm -hmm. Did you have something? No. Nope. Okay. You think down here to the right? All right, then let's proceed. <clears throat> let's proceed with the agenda approval for tonight's meeting. I don't have any additional changes other than what you see printed. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Or um, a way to motion. I I think everybody got that email for number seven, and I don't know if we need to add to be able to talk about the second part of that email that he sent, or if it. All included? Okay, perfect. Now I'll make a motion to approve the agenda for City Council meeting for uh, January 25th, 2018. You've heard the motion submitted by Mr. Parsons to approve uh, the agenda as it currently written. Do we have a second? I second. Seconded by Mrs. Costello. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion is carried. <clears throat> now our minutes approval from our January 11th City Council meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 11th, 2018. Okay. Mr. Shia submitted a motion to approve those minutes uh, as written for the date specified. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second and uh, all right, let me own it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? <laughs> motion is carried. <clears throat> okay, um, about your approval totals. I would like to just make one note, just a reminder that typically we have two voucher approvals a month, but because of January is always tricky because December slips slops over into January. We end up just doing January all in one, all as one big lump. So this is all of January. So that's why you're not seeing a first of January and an end of January. Okay. Well, thank so you for that. <clears throat> clarification there. I'll make a motion to approve January 2018 total um, vouchers. $27,944.55. Oh, the new updated one. I have three. The one that says 48317, pardon 78. <laughs> 481778. Thank you. All right, you've heard the motion submitted by Mrs. Costello to approve the January 2018 total as read. <clears throat> we have a second. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Parsons. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion is carried. <clears throat> All right, well, and now it's our opportunity to engage in special reports, and um, uh, Lewis County Commissioner Bobby Jackson is on, and, and we're ready uh, for you this time, so we'll, we'll turn the podium over to you. Mr. Mayor, Council, and citizens of Baylor, thank you for allowing me to come back. Um, I'm going to keep this short. Uh, it's a nasty night. I'm sure we all want to conclude business and get home as quick as we can. So the reason I'm coming here tonight is that I do serve as uh, Lewis County Commissioner for the second district, uh, which Vader is actually the third district. Your, uh, commissioner Stafford is your commissioner, but it feels like you ought to be in my district because it's right here in line with, with Winlock and Napa Vine and uh, the other communities that are in my district. The reason I'm here tonight is to share some information with you, basically. Uh, this is preliminary information. Uh, I have made my way around to most all of the city councils here in the area. Uh, Mossy Rock is still on the list, and I'll be uh, speaking with them in a couple of weeks. Uh, as a county commissioner, I also serve on the board of directors for Twin Transit in Centralia. Uh, Mayor Smith is familiar with what I'm about to talk about. Uh, he's heard us discuss this in mayor's meetings. Uh, our board and our organization has been looking into for the last year a feasibility of expanding our transit services to the entire county. Um, 
this is something that we have, uh, we, we, we had a, a group, Nelson Nygaard, do a study for us to check the feasibility of this. We've got the report back. Uh, we've had this discussion with other city councils in the area. Uh, largely, this has been spurred on by uh, the fact that uh, Lewis Mountain Transit, which is a transit system in the east end of the county, uh, is, uh, is a grant-funded uh, organization run by Doug uh, Hayden. And uh, up until recently, the match that he has had to provide to the state for funding to continue this transit center has been 5%. Well, the state, in their wisdom, decided that that needed to be increased to 10%. Well, for a small operation like Lewis Mountain Transit, that's a huge leap in, uh, in funding that they are not going to be able to come up with on a continual basis, and so they had approached Twin Transit about the possibility of combining services, absorbing their service, and so when we began to discuss that, we also talked about why not look into the possibility of expanding that out to the rest of the county. My reason for being here tonight is just to share with you that these, these conversations are going on right now. Um, I don't have a whole lot of information to give you at this point. Mainly, I wanted to come just to begin to share what the vision we have for this idea is that uh, there are some things that are going on right now uh, to push this forward. I, I had invited our new executive director, uh, Derek Wojcik Damers, to come and be with us tonight. He was not able to. He had another commitment. Uh, we just brought him in from uh, from Colorado as our new executive director. What's his name again? It's De boy, I don't to do <laughs> Derek Wojcik, and it's spelled W-O-J-C-I-K hyphen D-E-M-E-R-S. Maybe that's right. That's Maybe it's not. <laughs> Derek is D E R D E R. It's actually D E R R I C. I think. Okay. Oh, I'm way off. Okay. I can say it, but I can't always spell it. That's right. But Derek has come in. He is actually a, a, a Lewis County native. He was uh, born and raised in the area. He graduated from W F West in 1993. He left the area. He's been in Colorado for, I think, a little over 20 years, um, involved in every aspect of transit that you could be involved in, but he has not yet been a general manager. And we brought him on after Rob LaFontaine left Centralia to go to inner city transit up in uh, uh, Olympia. In Olympia, right. And so Derek is here. He's an exciting guy. We're really thrilled to have him with us. He brings a lot of energy and a lot of excitement to uh, what we're trying to get accomplished with transit. Um, and again, I, I will probably try to set up a second time to come so I can introduce him to you because he's the guy that really is going to be able to spur on the idea of what county transit looks like. I know that a number of years ago there was an attempt to do countywide transit through Twin Transit, but uh, as I understand it, that, that was not very successful. I don't think that they at the time had uh, the wherewithal and the ability to actually push that idea forward, but we're moving in a direction where we believe we can get this done. Now, what this will mean is that uh, some of our smaller communities, such as Vader, will actually have the opportunity to have a, some level of bus service, transit service, into this area. I'm not here to tell you what that will look like. I don't try to make promises that I can't possibly keep. Um, what I can tell you is that there's a lot of discussions being held right now on what that could possibly look like for this area. Um, one of the reasons that uh, you know, I, I've gotten pretty passionate about this, I've got a big, broad vision about what this could look like for us in the future, but just some basic ideas of why we're driving this. First of all, I think it'll be an economic driver for Lewis County. If we connect people, we can connect people to a lot of different areas where they'll do business, whether it's no matter where it is, which generates income for the, you know, for the county. The other piece of it is it's also a driver for education. Uh, if we have young people that are living in the outlying areas from Centralia and Chagas, they want to go to Centralia College, you know, uh, for example, uh, there's, poss there's a possibility that transit could provide the opportunity for them to get to college, and so that drives that piece of it for us. Those are a couple of things that it does for us. We believe that it would, be, it would uh, help us drive with uh, emergency management, 911 situations like that. If we have flooding events or we have any other kind of events in the area, we need to get to people. We believe that transit can help us move that uh, move forward on, on those sorts of things. There's other things too as well, other pieces of it um, that we believe will be helpful, but the idea behind it, and I realize I'm just giving you an off-the-cuff kind of a, 
conversation about it tonight. But the idea behind it is that we connect our community, and by connecting Lewis County together, it will begin to push us towards, I think, uh, a time in our, in our county where we can begin to see some real benefits from uh, putting people together as far as the economy is concerned and other things. It's even a tourism driver. And again, like I said tonight, this is just a basic conversation. I wanted to bring it before you. Um, one of the things that, that, that I'm seeing is that we have a real need uh, to get people from point A to point B, specifically senior centers, or senior citizens, excuse me, that may, not, may no longer be able to drive for one reason or another, or they don't own traditional transportation. How nice would it be if, say, grandma, who can't drive anymore, needs to get to Walmart in Chehalis, which seems to be the, the, mecca and the, uh, the mecca hub of activity in, in all of Lewis County. She would like to go shopping, but she needs to wait for her granddaughter to come and pick her up or maybe her son to come and pick her up, and they're working at that time, but she really needs to get to town. You can give folks like that a sense of freedom, a sense that they are still in control of their own lives, they can still do things the way they want to do them, they can go shopping on their own. Transit can help them get back and forth from their home to wherever it is they need to be. We also see it as a mechanism to help a number of people get to the doctor, hospitals, whatever that situation might be. Uh, paratransit is also a piece of that. For those that need paratransit, we can be able to provide that outside of the normal area that they have been doing this. It's a big idea. It's a big vision that we have. Um, and tonight was, again, uh, I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. I didn't have anything prepared. I don't have any information for you just yet. Uh, kind of knew where I was going with this until we hired our new uh, executive director, and he's messed everything up. So, <laughs> so I'm here to, to just kind of give you a jumping off point that we're going to be coming back to you at some point, and we're going to be talking about this even further. Uh, but tonight I just wanted to bring it to you. Open it up for questions, what it might look like. Uh, I, I know a few things right at this moment that maybe I can share with you, but uh, Vader's very much a part of this, and, very, and, and we want to be able to connect eventually Portland to Seattle through Lewis County. Gets us into Calix County where we can connect with the transit center down there and also up into Thurston County so you can have countywide transit going east and west, north and south, and get people to where they need to get to at any given time. Uh, the vision that I have for this is far-reaching. Uh, it's not going, it's one of these, those things that once it starts, it's going to start very slowly. But it gives, uh, it gives Lewis County an opportunity to continue to move around connecting with people as we are, as the county commissioners are doing everything we can to try to help rebuild our economy. So, pretty okay. simple and stated, and I, I, I'll be glad to answer your questions. Yes, okay. To confirm what you said, I had a conversation with a young lady today who's 14, and she wants to go to college, but her parents' transportation is a problem. Mm -hmm. She lives here in Vader, and, you know, also my mother started a senior citizen bus route mm -hmm. in the backcountry of San, East San Diego County that made it possible for people to stay there and not have to move sure. when because they couldn't drive. These are the very reasons why we're talking about this. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Do you happen to, to have any general idea as to how this will be funded? We have a general idea. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I really sure you. <laughs> it will ultimately require a ballot measure for a what we at this moment what we believe a two tenths of a sales tax, not a property tax a sales tax, two-tenths of a percent, which is a penny on a $5 purchase. Uh, the cities of Centralia and Chehalis are already paying this two-tenths of, of a percent sales tax. Uh, they, they themselves will not be involved in that particular measure. It will be the rest of the county that will be involved in voting for that. What two-tenths are not? I'm sorry? What two towns? Did you Centralia and Chehalis, because oh. Twin Transit is basically the Twins, oh, yeah. Twin Cities. Right. Uh, they are already paying that particular tax. And so this will extend, the, we need to be able to extend the, the uh, tran it needs to be a transit taxing district. <coughs> and so that is, that is our initial goal. And uh, as far as when that happens, uh, we had some ideas that we might could get it done this year. Uh, we're not probably going to do that, and that's just with some initial talks mm -hmm. with Nelson Nygaard. 
because we really want to spend a whole lot of time educating the public. Um, there's a certain level of marketing that we need to, to go through, but we need to have meetings like we're having here tonight where people that are far more skilled at this than I am can answer those kinds of questions and we can talk about some particulars. Uh, my goal again tonight was just, to, in fact, after we rescheduled this meeting, I thought, no, I really need Derek here, but he, like I said, he wasn't available. So what I may, what we'll probably try to do is reschedule another time, but we'll wait down the line a little bit so I can bring him in. But maybe more than anything, just letting you folks know that uh, we're thinking about this. And um, as we move forward, one of the things that we face is, uh, and I'll make sure I'm not running over my time here. Um, one of the th things that we face um, from the County Commission, and I'll just give you a little bit of up update, as many of you may know, and you've already seen that we are in the process of looking for a county manager. Um, when this idea was first uh, proposed to us, I was, I was not for it. I didn't feel it was a, a necessity. But as we've moved forward over the last year, and, and you know, a year in office will teach you a lot. And so um, after doing my own level of research on this and speaking to a number of people that have been directly involved with management in other areas, I've spoken to city managers and, and county, county executives, um, we are moving forward with that idea. And the, the, the reason for that is that we believe that a county manager will help us take care of the day-to-day -day operations of the county itself. Uh, freeing up the commissioners to be able to go out and work on projects such as this one, which is something I'm going to, I've, I've already put a lot of time and effort into and will continue to do so. Uh, doing this in hopes that we can have an individual that comes in with the executive, executive experience that can help us identify where we are very efficient, where we are deficient, how we can change those things, how we can correct some things. Uh, as many of you know, we just came through a very difficult budget season. Uh, we decentralized our fiscal uh, department, which it was a good time for us to do that. The individual that was the administrator of that department left for a job in another city. So it gave us an opportunity to look really hard at how can we take that department and spread those people out to the departments they actually work for and not have to have that, that, that cost in there, that infrastructure cost that helps save us money. Um, you know, we can talk about a number of different things, as many of you probably have been following the entire senior center transition uh, situation. Um, it was a big year for that. Uh, also, we've made some other cuts in some areas. But we want to do what we do more efficiently. And so as we move forward, we're also looking at other ideas that are even outside the box for Lewis County that could help drive our economy. Transit's one of those ideas. Commissioner Stamper and I can speak for him on this, has been fighting tooth and nail with DNR over timber revenues. Uh, as many of you know that uh, <coughs> DNR has pushed back very hard on, as, we're, as we have affectionately termed it, Spotted Owl Part 2 with the Marble Merlette. Uh, they are digging deeper into our revenues. There have been some discussions, I think, uh, statewide among counties of a possible possible litigation against DNR for not fulfilling their obligations to the counties the way they're supposed to. I don't know where that is. Commissioner Stamper would, would be better uh, equipped to speak to that. But because of diminishing timber revenues, because of unfunded mandates, you may have heard about a number of those things. Indigent defense is an issue for us. Um, it digs in. It digs into our revenues and, and, and creates issues for us. And so I believe timber is going to make a level of a comeback Will it ever be what it was once before? I would seriously doubt that for a lot of reasons, mainly because the industry has changed so dramatically. But I think that we can rebuild those things. It's just taking a lot of time, a lot of effort. Industry coming to this area. Uh, there's so many things that we need to be working on, and with the county executive, we believe that that will give us that opportunity to really focus hard on some of those things, get us out as the face of the county to be able to get some of those things done so that we can continue to enjoy a life here in Lewis County. So that's kind of an update of what's going on there. But uh, just a just a real quick idea. How about an elevated monorail? <laughs> Man, <laughs> the 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 sky. Yeah. we could have one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> just get that. Um, <laughs> one of the things that, uh, and I sat down with someone today and was talking about this. One of the things I believe as a county commissioner is that my job, specifically, is to uh, to do what I can now, but to prepare for the future. Uh, I learned a long time ago, it doesn't all end with me. You know, if it does, we're in trouble. Um, so these things that we're talking about, like transit and some of these other things, these, the, the vision that I have for transit is so far-reaching, 
I may not see it in my lifetime, and I'm okay with that, but we need to put the foundation in place. We need to begin to affect people's lives in a very positive way with the things that we're trying to push forward and do. And so it's a lot of work for us to do, but it's good work, and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. I'm glad I'm, that uh, people of this county trusted me to come up and be one of their commissioners. So anyway, I just came to, yes sir, I'm sorry. Have, have you uh, ever thought about, or can the county um, work on Amtrak getting more stops in Lewis County? I'm sure we can. I mean, we have one main one in Centralia. And that's, uh, and that's it. Is that the only one? I think that's the only one. Really, a lot of that I would think has to do with how the, the rails are set up, you know? Um, if there's rail service that, that branches off into smaller communities. While this transit guy is thinking, <coughs> it'd be awesome to have one here or win one. I'm not kidding. Yeah, here um, would be the best. Oh, of course. I think that's I think that would definitely <laughs> a long range. Track, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a long range um, vision so. for what we could do in the future. And I want to toss this out there because part of again, part of my district is the south part of the county. Vader got pulled into District 3 with the last redistricting because of the, the voter number. Uh, that feels weird, <laughs> to say the least. It should be in two, but my thought process has been that if we really want to, uh, to, to make a, an impact on the I-5 corridor, we need to start thinking about South County. I don't know what other people's thoughts are about that. Help me with this, and I'm asking questions tonight. Uh, I don't know what the flooding issues are in this area. Are there any major flooding issues in this area? It's not in my belly right now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Not, not so much in the Vader area. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The only thing I can come up with is out by the freeway, mm -hmm. right there by the 59, yeah. I want to say. Yeah. The the Toodle, maybe that might be the Cowlitz, something right. in there. That That's would, the yeah, closest that one that comes to us. Beyond yes. that, you're up at 57 on yeah. that side. My, my point to that is that it seems to me that it would be advantageous for us to really think seriously in the future about pushing towards the south end of the county for development. Um, Right now, we are also. I also not only serve as a um, county commissioner, but I also take my hat off and I become a, a, a Chehalis Basin Flood Zone Control Authority supervisor. Sorry. Say that three times and not trip up. <laughs> but as a supervisor myself, uh, supervisor staff or supervisor fund, we're in the process of working with the Army Corps of Engineers about permitting the water retention system up in the Willapaw Hills. We know that once that process gets started and gets started um, in full force, that's going to change the mindset of developers that want to come to this area because our understanding is we have a lot of people that would like to locate in Lewis County to build homes, to build businesses. Uh, we are such a primary location to see that. Uh, but we flood, especially up in the Chehalis Centralia area. And I think this is just my, this is just my take, my perception, okay? I think we... Uh, a lot of people have a, have a limited thought process when it comes to development because it all seems to be centered around the hub of Centralia and Chehalis. And we're so much more in Lewis County than that. So one of my thought processes moving forward is why not South County? Why not along the I-5 corridor in South County? Um, Costco right out here. We'll do it, man. <laughs> but there's a lot of things we could do, I think, but it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of uh, working towards that. And so I just want to let you know that your county commissioners are working hard to push the county forward. And so just came to share all that information with you. I um, hope I said something that uh, um, made sense. And, uh, we will look forward to coming back at a later time and bringing our executive director with us. Commissioner Jackson, we're honored to have you, and I thank you for the here. service you're rendering for us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, that was interesting. Uh, let's um, now proceed with our official agenda. And let's um, I know that we've got um, a couple of other distinguished visitors uh, with us. Let's proceed with item number one. Council to consider adoption of the wastewater treatment facilities plan amendment. And uh, I will start this conversation by noting that uh, hopefully you have your, um, your facilities plan. If not, that's okay. But um, 
Um, it's going to be amended somewhat, and I know that we have Matt Wadlington uh, here with us. So from no, this is the amendment. Oh, that is the amendment. Yeah, Matt's going to okay. handle the next item. Yes. So uh, you're going to go over some of the amendments to it that will no. change it. No, 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 Mayor. Okay. He's going over the contract, which is item number two. We've already mm -hmm. done all the amendments to this mm -hmm. to this okay. plan. Uh, once again, I managed to uh, <laughs> step all over myself in this presentation. So, Matt, I'm going to turn the time over to you. And do okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just, that's on number two, not number one. Oh, well, then what is it? Um, I thought we uh, okay. were this. Okay, on this, Matt has already come and explained everything, and we've gone through, had the public meetings and all that. Um, the, this um, has gone, the plan amendment, has gone to Department of Ecology and gotten their approval and blessing. Yay! That's uh, one of the things that I added to some of your packet. Um, it's the approval letter. So now the next step is that we need to officially, as a city, adopt it as, our, as an amendment that the city accepts this amendment. And we need to do that before we can move to step number two, which is the contract with Civil West for design. So what we're looking for tonight is a motion stating that council approves the amendment that's been um, provided and worked on for over a year. I think it's been over a year, um, and that council's ready to move forward with that. Well, thank you. That's much clearer. <laughs> what did we approve last time? Well, we last time we approved moving forward with selecting Civil West for our design. Perfect. And you guys said we yes. want to move. We want to see a contract at the next meeting. So that will be That's item number two. Is that contract? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the City of Vader Wastewater Facilities Plan Amendment that was prepared by Civil West in August of 2017. Okay. And Mr. Shine has um, submitted a motion to approve of the wastewater treatment facilities plan uh, is noted. And do we have a second? Can I make a comment? Uh, okay. Let's see if there's a second before we proceed with any comments. I will, I will second. Okay, it's been seconded by Mr. Costello. Now is the opportunity to... Okay, I'm not, I'm not real educated on the steps here, but I am concerned about um, the bottom line where it's going to cost the citizens a bear. And I, I'm not, I don't know if that's when this comes into play or if that's further down the road. But we're talking, okay, there's 625 citizens, 220 of us are hooked up to sewer, say four don't pay, so that's dropping our number down to 216 people that are going to try to pay this huge, huge debt that we're going to incur. And I understand the need for all of this. I get all of that. I think it's very, very important. But we've had what, 14 years to come up with more money, and now we're telling the citizens that are on fixed incomes and aren't going to make any more money that, sorry, but in 10 years, this is what your sewer bill is going to be, and we're expecting more people to come into this town, but in my mind, what's going to happen is Bader's going to turn into a ghost town. Who can pay that? Out of the 200 people, I mean, how can people pay that enormous amount of money? So like I say, I'm not totally educated in all of this, but bottom line is, when do we say, how do we come up with this money? Because we can't expect our senior citizens to pay that kind of money. Well. <coughs> and that's my concern. So it, in good conscience, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't go forward with this. Malona, we've been at this for 10 years. I've heard that phrase, those concerns. So hundreds of times, and we, in all of our meetings, our, our public hearings, it, it's um, that you're simply capturing the, the concern and the aggravation that we've all felt about this. It's like we're, um, we're being asked to go down the gangplank, and uh, there's a sword poking us and prodding us uh, to jump off on this, but um, we're a code city. Uh, we uh, are under order from the Department of Ecology, you don't, they're not asking you if you want to do this. Um, they're simply indicating to us that we have to come up with something. And this actually represents the least expensive option that I've heard. And, uh, and Kathy Reed is here with us from the, the Washington State Department of Commerce. Would you agree, uh, Kathy, that um, this is the uh, lowest cost 
it's half the cost of the Toledo project, and there they have 25 more people than we do. And um, it's one fifth or one fourth the cost of the Winlock facility. And, uh, so. <clears throat> Okay, I'm not debating that it's a good plan. I'm not debating that it has to be done. My question is, 14 years, how come there hasn't been more money brought from sources? How come there hasn't well, been wait a second. I mean, We've and, had, uh, what, $750,000 or $800,000 in grant uh, for the design funding. That has been applied right. to this. Right. Um, so we can't say that there hasn't been. And um, uh, yes. Kathy. Hi, Kathy Reed, Department of Commerce. Um, for 14 years, you haven't been looking for funding for construction. You have you've gotten a lot of grants and some loan money to prepare the plan. So you probably know that there's um, different phases for a big project like this. Correct. There's planning, mm -hmm. design, construction. You can't start looking for construction money until you have an approved plan and then a design for it. And then you know, because we don't know exactly how much that's a that's a planning level estimate. So we have, I think that the city has, um, you guys held out for many years for a cheaper alternative with a cheaper cost estimate. Um, the mayor was correct on that. We've done a pretty good job of getting a lot of grant money for some projects along the way, replacing some lines and doing some smaller upgrades, stuff like that. Um, the latest funding package for the plan was half grant, half loan. And that's the similar package for the, you now the design phase. Um, but we haven't, it isn't like we've been not looking for construction funding. It's that you can't apply for construction funding yet. I think the city has done a lot of things to set itself self up to be ready for that when the time comes. But we aren't quite at the point where we're applying for construction funding yet. Yeah, I hope that helps. And I want to quickly add here that the city has been accumulating funds. We're up to, what, $235,000 in their fund to help you know, pay for this. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot but, uh, for the city of Vader to accumulate that. It's had a financial impact on us, and it's been hard you know, to keep the books balanced in doing that. So, um, and like Kathy is saying, when the time comes when we can begin uh, to seek grant funding, oh man, we're going to beat every bush and look under every rock, I can assure you. But you do understand my concern well, here yes, for our senior no, citizens no, and for no. what's going to happen to the town of Vader. <laughs> that's why we've been going at this for, uh, I say 10 years because that's my experience. But uh, uh, and that's not going to stop. But and I'm not debating. I'm with you. And we, I'm not fixing them. Like most I'm afraid of for our citizens. Just, Me too. If these numbers are what falls in place, I am afraid yeah. for our citizens. Let's not count those numbers quite yet because it's still up in the air. And I'm going to hold out, you know, yesterday, <clears throat> uh, one mayor from each of the 50 states uh, were in Washington, D.C., and they had a special meeting in which uh, they were hearing, and I haven't gotten any feedback from that meeting yet, but um, I've been kind of following it, and I hope to get some feedback. But um, and the whole intent of that was to hear what infrastructure uh, the mayors of the 50 states need. And um, I mean, I, we can't count the money until it's given, but um, the current executive um, uh, office has declared that they're going to uh, unleash hundreds of billions of dollars to work on infrastructure in the United States of America, something that hasn't been done in, in, to that extent in decades. Now, I know there's skepticism out there, and I'm skeptical too, but I throw that out there. Um, by the time we're in a position to maybe start going after funding, it's possible that maybe uh, the government will augment some of those funding sources. Do you have any sentiment, Kathy, that that's... I know what you're... I have sentiments about what you just said, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect they're not positive. <laughs> <laughs> May I add just one thing? Because I, I hear your concern, and I don't know if this might be small comfort, but approving the plan itself isn't committing you to anything. Without an approved plan, you cannot begin to pursue that funding that is out there. Even once you apply for funding and get it offered to you, you're not committed to it until you sign the contract. 
So I, I understand what you're saying, um, but the, the act of approving the plan doesn't uh, doesn't commit you to that money. It is a necessary step in helping you to apply for grants and loans in the future. Thank you. Yeah, the funding sources won't even look at you without an approved plan. They're like, you're not on an approved plan, you're not ready for our money yet. So, yeah. what, what was the year that we started um, setting money aside to gain this 200 and some thousand? Have we been doing it since? It, it's oh, been since eight. my. It's been since yeah. I've been here. I came since, in 2010, since, so since I'm 2000 gonna guess probably 2012. Maybe is yeah. maybe when we started. I could look back and tell you for sure, but yeah. So I, I'm kind of thinking Leona's mm -hmm. thought on this is if we've known it for 14 years, mm -hmm. yeah. Why didn't we start saving sooner? Just well, throwing that out there. Well, I can tell you. Well, I know, I know, I know what you're gonna tell me, but <laughs> <laughs> that's it's hindsight. And, yeah. we no. the uh, it's not, no, we have been. Oh, yeah. It's every time you see a rate increase, that's where Since the money is going. Exactly. Pretty much. That's why we're been raising the rates so that you can begin to accumulate this. Yeah, and so but, every time. You want to talk about uh, elected officials. Uh, I mean, I don't want to cast aspersions, but uh, there have been decades that are going on where that hasn't been done. And so you know, most cities plan for right. to replace their critical infrastructure needs. So and this has been a positive reflection on the elected officials in the past several years. So, <laughs> but a little comfort when you know you're realizing you're going to be looking at four to five million dollars. But that's just the total cost. Like Kathy's saying, we'll be out and, and foraging about for uh, grant monies. Is, is Matt going to get an opportunity to talk tonight? Yes. Well, maybe tell me. Okay, so I'll save my questions for you then. Okay. Now we do have a. I know the time is fleeting here. We're, uh, uh, but this is a valuable conversation. Uh, so your voice is important. Uh, but uh, do you want to hear from the public? Then? Yes. Give them time. Go ahead. Uh, comment about your executive uh, uh, plan to. Uh, Four billion into the in, in infrastructure. The plan is that the contractors will take out loans and and build the whatever, and then the uh, government will reimburse the contractors. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, and then <coughs> the contractor, the major contractor. My guess is they looked at this and said, you want us to do what? And we're, oh, we're not going to take on that kind of debt. So. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, <coughs> observations. Um, and, um, so um, we appreciate that. So with that, um, uh, we've, uh, we're just in the comment phase of the motion that is before the council. Are there any other thoughts or observations? about the motion. And, uh, hearing none, let's put it to a vote. Um, uh, all in favor of, um, of uh, the motion as expressed, they indicate uh, with a, a, a yay. All in favor say aye. 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 Not a yay. Okay. Uh, are there any opposed? Okay. The motion is carried. And thank you for that. That's, that's, um, that's a historic step. Every step is the story. Yeah, tell me about the next one. Next one's a scary one. Next. <laughs> so now we get to item number two. And uh, uh, so there are some. We'll deal with the. This is an update. We'll consider resolution 02 2018. This is a different version. Okay. And this has some changes that, if I'm stating it correctly, that Matt Wadley then will go over with us. <laughs> and you can take the podium. Okay, thank you, Mayor Smith. And Council. Council members. Uh, good evening, everyone. In the, in the council packet, you have the, the draft version of, of our proposal to move forward into the design phase of the, of the wastewater treatment plan. 
Um, what, what Jill just handed out is an, an amended proposal. And I'd like to go go through that with you so you can see the changes. Um, I'm going to assume that, that you had a chance to look at the original one, and, and I'll, I'll go through the, the changes with you. Um, if we want to turn to uh, page four, um, I, I've requested that we change the time of completion. Um, I, I, it was stated as two or 300 days, and I've, I've requested that changes to 365 days. Um, I recognize that the that based on the, the, the funding program and the and the loan application, or the application for the for the construction, this has to be done by a certain date. However, I anticipate that there will be follow up issues after it's submitted. Um, that, that we'd like to be able to have an extra 65 days, make a whole calendar year to to complete. Uh, we do intend to to meet the. The schedule that's in the, in the agreement. So, um, the the next page uh, talks about the the, the, the total cost. Um, our original estimate was, was uh, five hundred eighteen thousand, uh, based on conversations that we've had with with Department of Commerce and Department of Ecology. Uh, we were able to make some savings by not having to do some of those some of those steps that we were planning on. So that has reduced to $467,000. Um, the, the next page, page six, is just a, just a change from Exhibit D to Exhibit C, talking about the insurance requirements. Um, <coughs> the numbering is off, that's all. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then we'll move over into the uh, the, the, the scope of services proposal that, that Civil West provided. Uh, the first change on that is on page two of, of, of that. Um, we, we had a funding assistance scope. Um, Jill and I had talked about, about being able to help fill out applications, provide information. Um, Ecology has said that that is not a reimbursable fee. And so that, that couldn't be in that scope. And so, so we took that out. We'll still do our best to provide that, that information as, as required, but um, it won't be a line item reimbursable. Um, and, and let me just go through the, I guess, the scope of work real quick and, and explain what we're going to be doing. Uh, the, the first part is just our internal project management and administration of the, of the contract. Um, it, it includes such things as sending out monthly reports for, for um, approval or, or for the council to, to see and, and be updated, uh, internal timekeeping, just administrative things that we need to do. Um, we'll, we'll skip past the funding assistance. Kickoff meeting, uh, I'd like to have um, our whole design team. Um, I'm, I'm planning on having three people come up for a kickoff meeting or we'll tour the plant, um, talk to the operators, um, we can talk to the council and, and, and just make sure that, that we're all on the same page and, and expect the same things. Um, our, our next task is project update and public outreach meetings. Uh, we put a, 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 uh, up to six public meetings in there. Uh, I anticipate maybe four council meetings during this period and maybe another two just meeting with public to to uh, review any comments, concerns that, that people may have. Uh, data gathering. We'll be collecting topography of the entire treatment plant area. We'll be, collect, we'll be doing a sludge survey to find out how much sludge is in the current lagoons that will have to be removed. Um, Based on the, the, the conversations with, with the ecology, <coughs> we will not have to be doing any work in, in Olaqua Creek. So that's going to save, that's where a lot of the money savings is coming from, not having to permit any work. So, so our, our data gathering will not include any survey topography of, of the creek. Um, a geotechnical evaluation. We'll, we'll have some samples taken in the area. It, it'll include um, 
groundwater levels. It'll, it'll include bearing capacity of, of the soils for us to use during the design. Um, number seven is a pre-designed technical memo. Um, this this will be a a, a memo I, I anticipate it being you know, twenty pages, twenty five pages of, of technical data and and, and pre-designed info that will describe how much how big the lagoons need to be exactly, how deep they need to be, how much electricity it's going to use, um, all the info that's going to be used for the actual design will come out of this memo. Um, we will provide a copy of this memo. The, the arrow down at the bottom of that page means that there was a, a, an inclusion in that area. And on the very back page, um, Jill has, has identified what the inclusions are. So, so we will provide a draft of the pre-designed technical memo at the 80% completion of that memo for review and comments by the city. Uh, we'll also be submitting that to, to Ecology. Um, and then the comments that, that we receive will be, will be considered during the, the design. Uh, the next step is um, environmental coordination. Um, We'll, we'll work with, uh, with the SCJ Alliance. We'll be doing the, the State Environmental Review Program um, application and submittal. Um, we'll be providing any, any biological assessments that they may need, any, any archaeological assessments that may be needed. Um, some of, a, a lot of these that, that I've identified, the wetlands, the biological, the archaeological, these are all subconsultants that, that we would hire. If they're not needed, we don't hire them. You guys save the money. Um, but, but I want to get those in there just in case they are. Uh, the regulatory coordination, this is, this is where we'll, we'll work with the ecology. We'll submit the plans. We'll submit the pre-design report, the plans, work with them, and, and get their approval of the, of the whole thing. Uh, items 10 and 11. Uh, we've taken out, again, because we're not going to be getting in, into Olifel Creek. Um, so we don't need to do that joint aquatic resource permit application. And we don't need to do a hydraulic and mixing zone analysis. So, uh, <coughs> the big one is, is the final design. Um, and I, we went through and I, I tried to identify all of the different um, plan sheets. And I'm sure I didn't get them all, but... but in an effort to, to demonstrate what would be included. I, I wrote down everything that we could think of at the time. Like I said, I'm sure there'll be more as we, as we go along. Uh, there was an inclusion in number 12 there, um, saying that the preliminary drafts of the construction plans will be submitted to the city um, at the 60% and 90%, um, and obviously at final completion uh, for the city's review and comments. I interrupt for just a second. Yes. Is everybody catching that where there's an arrow, there's a section on the back that coordinates with that, that's what's inserted? I just wasn't able to insert it on that page. Okay, just to make sure that was clear. Go ahead. Um, so, so included in the in, in the design will be will be a new a, a new headworks, which is the the primary screen of the of the wastewater um, and and flow measurement. Um, then we'll go into, into the lagoons where there will be aerated, the lagoons will have to be relined, uh, there will be curtains installed, uh, the wastewater flows from, from cell to cell, and ultimately then as it comes out of the last cell it's, it's disinfected, most likely using chlorine, but in the, in the pre-design report that will be one of the things that we evaluate. Maybe ultraviolet is, is a more efficient option for the city, we'll evaluate that. And, um, so it'll get disinfected and then discharged into the river. Uh, one of the differences from the, from the uh, facilities plan amendment was that the facilities plan amendment um, suggested a, a, a wetland post-treatment um, system. Um, we suggested that that would be a, a phase 1B, um, so part of ecology has said um, we're, we're, we're approving you going forward with just phase one, and then we'll monitor the effluent quality after that and see if, if this wetland treatment is, is needed at that time. So 
Uh, again, it's a savings now. Um, it may come two or three years that they say you need some additional treatment, and then we can look and see if that wetland treatment is the right way to go. Um, and then after after disinfection, it'll well, we'll put a new pipe down to the river and tie into the existing diffuser that's that's sitting in the river. Um, uh, the next step, the, the technical specifications, uh, we'll write up everything that, that a contractor will need to know in order to build this um, to the to the quality that's that's expected and, and deserves. And then after, after technical specifications, we're putting in a, a, a new line, which is cost estimates, um, based on, on conversations we had recently um, with Ecology. We talked about uh, needing cost estimates updated throughout, and so we're going to provide cost estimates when we submit the plans at the 60, 90, and, and final construction phase. Um, and then lastly, our, our, our reimbursables, which are, are just office costs, paper costs, mileage costs for, for, for cars. So, um, the, 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 the project <coughs> proposal there um, in, in the original that shows 518, if you look on the very back is a, is a new layout um, showing the new total of 467. Yeah. <coughs> um, that's that's most of it. There, there, let's see, there's another arrow there at the very end. Um, those are just... Change it from planning document to a construction <coughs> document. Right. So it's a typo. We, we still were referencing that we were going to produce planning documents and now we're producing construction documents. So we made that change. That's the last one. Uh, the next two pages after that are, are the project schedule. It's... it's uh, it's very quick to get from here to um, November 18th when, when we need to have these done and, and submitted. Um, and it's, it's very quick um, and, and we're going to have, like I said, a, a whole team of people working to do this and get it done on time. Uh, that's, that's the end of... of of my stuff on that project. I don't know, uh, Jill, if this is good too. Is That's some verbiage that the funding source, the Department of Ecology, requires that we include in our contract with our, um, with our um, people. What's that called? <laughs> consultant, thank you. With our consultants, it's just required verbiage by them. And, and, and again, I, I, I want to reiterate that, that the cost the costs shown are, uh, are uh, time and materials not to exceed. So, so any of these items that, that aren't needed or aren't used, uh, the city sees the benefit of, of those. We tried to err on the side of conservatism and, and, and make these numbers high if, if we weren't sure if those are going to be required or not. So, so some of these subconsultants, like I mentioned, uh, may not be required, and, and that's a, that'll be an additional savings for the city. Okay. It's, it's been a pleasure working through the city, working with the city on this through the through the planning process. And I look forward to continuing to work and get you a viable design. On the on the scope of services proposal, will you send that bill to Mayor Kenneth Hill? Or oh, that's Kenneth Hill on there. Because <laughs> we can send it to Hill, that would be better. <laughs> I had no problems with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> you will write a check. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. It's been on the last couple of documents. But... <laughs> I never noticed that. <laughs> yeah, we'll send it to him. Okay. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Well, 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 oh, dear me. Well, yeah, and we thank you, uh, Matt, and I know that uh, Jill and Kathy and the Department of Ecology officials have uh, uh, been interacting uh, the teleconferences uh, leading up to this presentation. So thank you all for that. Um, uh, Kathy, did you want to add something uh, to what you heard? Uh, 
I, Matt mentioned the phasing in this project. <laughs> One of the reasons that this overall cost estimate is less is that ecology is um, allowing the city to build the minimum needed improvements right now, mm -hmm. and then do monitoring for a few years, and then see what additional water treatment might be needed. Rather than making you do it all now, they're giving you that time. So I want to give full disclosure, and you know, I think we all would, that um, this once this is designed and built, there may need to be some additional improvements made um, to the water treatment a few years down the road. Is this is this what anybody wants to hear? Where will we get funding, Kathy? Same question. Two or three years Same down the road to, to, to fix something it. that I, I just I didn't want to keep my mouth shut. But I'm so I want to make sure you're didn't. all understanding. And, and that I mean that's what it says in the plan that you just approved, and so I. But you didn't say two or three years down the road, did you? I said I think I said a few. So I, I do not recall. Do you recall okay, okay. I'll rephrase that. A couple. To, um, monitor. I, I believe Greg had, had mentioned Four that it was two or three years. Okay. They have to monitor for two or three years. Yeah. And, 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 well, I have a question. Can we clarify? The numbers that are in the facility plan that they just approved as as the city's plan, those whatever five million, six million dollars, that is including all the phases. Yes. So, but we're not working on all the phases right now. We're only working on the lagoon phase, the lagoon update. Yeah. So that's not going to be the full cost of what's in here. It's going to be less. The, I, in my mind, the understanding I have is the benefit of doing it this way is right now we don't have testing levels and information enough about Old Quack Creek and about how good our effluent is going to be with this new system in order to know precisely how much improvement we need to make in order to meet the regulations of the creek. If we, if we do it now, we have to um, apply all the extra um, uh, disinfection and improvements to a really high level because we don't know what the limitations are going to be. So it behooves us to have this period of, okay, let's do this first. Let's get the lagoons running so the lagoons are running properly. And once the lagoons are running properly, let's see what kind of effluent we're making. Let's take that same time and see what the Cowlitz or what the Oloqua Creek needs are. And then in a couple of years, let's come back and reevaluate so that we only have to, if we have to make any improvements, we only have to make the minimum amount of improvements. If we were to do it now, we have to kind of do a lot. We might end up overbuilding and overspending. So in that respect, I think that's a good thing because it might, in, in all likelihood, end up saving us some money because we won't have to overbuild. Am I yeah, stating that correctly? Excellent, excellent clarification. And I was not clear on saying, I meant when you're done building this phase one of the project. Okay. So, yes, does, mm -hmm. describe it much Does better. the money that you're giving us... And, and everyone gives us, does it sit in an account waiting for down the road um, if we when have to do some, more? No way. <laughs> there lies well, the problem. Because all the, pro, well, because all the programs, they have a big thing about the, uh, money has to be spent or right. the legislature or somebody right. takes it away. So, <clears throat> so just to clarify, Matt's designing phase one right now. You have a contract for design at phase one right now. You will build phase one, so you'll apply for construction funding for phase one. Thank you for clarifying that phase one, the, the total amount reflected in your um, facilities plan is what we expect for all of the phases. So phase one is going to be less than that, and then phase two might end up to one and two would total that number. What, what is the estimated time for all phases? Well, if, if we do uh, phase one, it gets constructed in, in 2019, we would, we would go from 2019 to say 2022, monitor the, the effluent, and then if, if additional treatment is needed, we would build additional treatment in 2023, 2024. So it could be, it could be six years from now before, before it's done if it's needed. 
So the concept would be we've been approved for a certain amount and we'd only spend a limited portion of that for phase one. No. No, okay. you, would, you would apply for what you need for phase one. The funding programs are not set up to keep um, a contract open that long, for one thing, because they only get X amount a year that has to be distributed around the state, <clears throat> right? And they, they want that to be spent right away. They don't want it to be sitting somewhere so somebody else can't use it. So I'm, I believe the same <coughs> programs will be in effect still then when, you know, when you're ready for phase two and you would go through the same design of those improvements and applying for construction funding for those improvements. Some of the regulatory um, groups, the state, they weren't really excited about this phased idea. And it took, I think, some of us really talking about it with them over and over again and saying, you know, this doesn't make sense for Vader. Vader really needs to be tight with our money. We need to be able to do something that allows us, if we can do it in phases, that would make more sense for us and see cost savings to be able to do it that way. And it took some some convincing, and eventually they... I felt like it they, was a win. That yeah, I think it was, it was a great thing that, that we were allowed to do it in phases, because typically they don't. They want you to just do it all at once. Well, so. I'm going to inject here and what I do know from personal experience what little I know of this, is that uh, right way back in the beginning, ecology was not embracing the refurbishment of our lagoons. Right. I mean, they were just, um, it was an oxidation ditch, and um, you embrace it, uh, uh, and whatever the outcome would be financially. So the fact that we're able to refurbish these lagoons is a victory. So you can see uh, that we've had victories, and I would point to the Department of Ecology, so pretty extraordinary uh, compassion that they showed to us. But, it's so, taken us yeah, 14 years to get, but we yeah, keep right. working at them until we finally have got something mm -hmm. that's During the construction uh, and the repair of the um, lagoons and you take the liner out, how is the system going to work? Will it be um, offline, yeah. online, one, some, somehow or another? That, that'll be a part of the design. We'll have to figure that out. Figure that what, out. What, what, what I'm assuming that, that we will uh, route the the flow into the second lagoon as we're working on the first lagoon, and then switch and then it switch as we're doing the second. So it'll be online the whole time. Who who is who is SCJ Alliance? Are they that is our okay. city's um, contracted city planning service? Oh, Gary Cooper is the is the gentleman. He works with our our planning department, and they are also the ones that do environmental. All of our SEPA and yeah, very surf very environmental home and location. Centralia. 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 <clears throat> okay. Well, I know uh, since I have to watch the clock, uh, I know we're, these are all very important uh, uh, issues and questions you're raising. You do have a um, persistent member of the public who would like to uh, have her voice heard. Okay. Persistent. Uh, as a persistent member of the community, I understand what Mrs. Sander Hunter, I believe, was getting at. And, and it is not a prudent family that's going to purchase a car. They know how much money they've saved, and they know how much the car is going to cost, so they can say how much more they're going to have to pay. And it seems that maybe that's why our government's in so much trouble. It seems very, very vague to me as to what each family household is going to have to pay for this new sewer system. I know it's necessary. I've got it. We can't live here without it. But we're being, to me, very vague. And how are we going to enforce it with people? We don't have people who pay their sewer bills now. How, how are we planning on enforcing this? <clears throat> well, that's obviously a question that um, um, has been addressed um, in the past. It's a valid question, I would say, and, uh, but um, um, it would probably take uh, several hours, or maybe, uh, maybe an hour, uh, to go over it in detail. Now, do you want uh, to? A quick and dirty answer is we don't know yet. We don't know until, well, we won't know until we apply for all the different funding. Once the design gets done and we can start applying for funding and start making requests for grant money and for loan money and for all, that's when, once we 
once we so do all that we'll push we'll feeding, feeding. Feeding. some will say no to and yeah. then we add it up and, and then, then we'll know for sure until then we can only make mm -hmm. guesstimates which is what we have in our facility plan as a guesstimate right now okay so until we get to that point i mean there's really no way to know unfortunately for sure doesn't sound very prudent yeah. but i understand <laughs> yeah. no we're not going for a golden toilet here we're, uh, it's the, the Kmart version is what we're going for. And I'm going to predict that we're going to get a 100% funding for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some of us not have gonna a rich somewhere. But, yeah. <laughs> May I ask one tiny little question on that before we end this? Just a tiny little question. Mm -hmm. When you were planning to do this, you said there are X amount of people in Vader. Did you incorporate Enchanted Valley in our world? To pay this, to use this facility. We when when we looked at the at the size of the facility that we would be designing, we assumed that that would be connected at some point. So that that projected flow would be included in the in the size of the plan. However, when we when we looked at, at how how the, the the funding is split up and who would have to pay for it, um, again we were conservative and we assumed that they would not be included. In that. Okay. We have made efforts to get them, but they're not interested at this particular moment in time. <clears throat> Maybe down the road they will be. But, uh, uh, okay, then uh, with that, one line, one person wants to have a comment. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that Jeremy can take it. Sure. I just want to thank Kathy for her diligence. Yeah. It, and the way I understand it, and maybe this is something you guys haven't thought of, but tell me if I'm wrong. Them approving this, and that means ecology is saying, well, we're just going to monitor it, okay? That means when it gets down there and they check it, it doesn't mean we have to go for more. It might just mean a little chlorine, people. Am I correct in that? I'm not saying that. I'm not I, saying I it would be, but it, it I don't know what. I don't know what will be required for future treatment, so I can't. Yeah, yeah. but I'm just saying, it's gonna, you know, <laughs> yeah. it could or it couldn't be, is what I'm saying. And I just want to thank both of you, because you guys have done a really good job. And if there's somebody else I'm missing, thank you, Jim. Thank you. I got it. Hey. Um, Good observation. Thank you so much, Matt, for that report. So now, uh, uh, with that uh, presentation, I think we're ready for uh, uh, council courage, <coughs> or uh, whatever the appropriate adjective may be, <coughs> for you to consider the resolution that uh, is before you. <coughs> there is some verbiage on this uh, agenda bill at the bottom if you want to use that. I move to approve resolution 022018 authorizing the mayor to execute a consultant services agreement for the design of the wastewater treatment facility lagoon upgrade project with Civil West Engineering Services Incorporated substantially as written. We heard the motion submitted by Mr. Shai to uh, approve resolution 022018 as read. Um, do we have a second for that motion? I'll second that. Uh, seconded by Mr. Daly. Uh, any additional commentary, thoughts, observations? Uh, hearing none, we'll put this to a vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, that motion is carried unanimously. I'm sorry, Mr. Daly, did you vote? I said aye. Oh, aye. you said aye. Okay, I'm sorry. Aye. Yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying that. That takes courage. I'm shaking in my feet. It's a poopy situation. <laughs> Uh, it is a very, thank you, thank you for that. That was a perfect analogy. That was the word I would use, but you're very yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, very impressed with the councils, and it's a reflection of the, the difficulty that it is to be an elected official. It's, the progress is sometimes painful, but ultimately, if uh, we can uh, use this to build an economic foundation that that there is economy of scale, and when you have a facility that uh, would um, uh, address growth, which this does with our water system, we can get infill and we can attract people, and um, if we could increase the number of users, all of our bills will go down. So.
So this, to me, is... Uh, if I win the lottery, I'll help with the... So I'll tell anybody that's... Okay. If I win the lottery, I will help cover this. <laughs> That's a better, record, you know. I better start buying tickets then. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is not on. Oh, so if Mayor switch. Ken Hill will pay for this as well. <laughs> 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 and if I win the lottery, you won't have to pay. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Did you write that down? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, all right. And with that, let's proceed with our agenda. The council to consider the Mayor Pro Tem situation for the 2018-2019 biennium. <clears throat> so, we've known that, uh, uh, as you're probably aware, uh, Council Member Joe Shai has been functioning as a mayor pro tem for uh, probably more than two years, I think, but the um, guidelines um, indicate that about every two years or so, uh, there ought to be a, a revisitation of that uh, assignment. And it doesn't mean that uh, he necessarily needs to be replaced. He's, he's still interested. <laughs> so, but um, I figured that now would be an appropriate time, as much as we've got a newly constituted city council, to uh, consider perhaps revisiting that need. And it's important to have a, a mayor pro tem, particularly since none of us is a uh, uh, legislative uh, official. And uh, uh, some of our uh, time is more challenging than uh, others. So, uh, with that, I'd uh, turn the time over to council members for commentary. If Mr. Shai is willing to do it once again, I would like to nominate him. Um, I witnessed him being filling in your position a couple times, and I thought he did an amazing job. He um, kept control of the the whole meeting, and we got through everything. I, I thought he did a wonderful job. If he's willing to do it again, I would love to have him stay on. Well, I will do it again for you. <laughs> yes, and, and I second I that. Agree. I agree. Yes, I, agree. Yes, I would echo those comments. Yes. That was outstanding for Mayor Pro Tem. We should probably yeah. have a motion yes. that continues him as Mayor Pro Tem for another two years. Yeah. Would you? I would love you? to make a motion that Mr. Shai stay on as Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Mm -hmm. For another two years. Okay. You've heard the motion submitted by uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Leona. Uh, and um, uh, to <laughs> have um, to invite uh, Mr. Shai to. <laughs> just got to get the motion back. <clears throat> uh, to uh, function as our mayor pro tem for another two years. And uh, do we have a second for that motion? Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Davis. Second. 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 Sorry, who did you say second? That could Mr. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Jason. Okay. I assumed I everyone would second it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, then all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? You don't count. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is worth a round of applause. <laughs> 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 I like the two ways I have to argue about that. <laughs> but we will. <won't. clears throat> All right, item number four. Council to consider recommendation for park board staffing changes. <clears throat> uh, just before the meeting, I shared with you a letter <clears throat> that I revised three times uh, since. Uh, I knew that we had an option available to us. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not going to read this letter, but I'd like to let you know that uh, uh, we have a, a fairly effectively functioning park board. It's been off and on. <clears throat> We've had two individuals whose attendance, three actually, whose attendance has been rather spotty. And it's had a, a, a deleterious impact on its performance. <clears throat> so knowing that, um, I uh, encountered an individual who has expressed um, a, a great deal of, uh, um, of interest and energy in contributing to the community. She's been here a little over a year, but um, <clears throat> her name is Deborah Crumples. I'm not sure if you're acquainted with her, 
I, I know the council likes them to be here, but she was not able to be. Um, but um, and we've had two individuals on the park board. <coughs> it's Brandon and Brianna Henson, the husband and wife team, who agreed to do it. They're a young couple with kids, and they're interested in the parks. And Brandon is currently serving as the uh, the chairman pro tem, the, the vice chairman, I guess, of the board. But um, uh, I wasn't able to get hold of them until uh, earlier this evening. <coughs> and uh, uh, I presented to them the situation we've been having, and they immediately embraced the reality that they haven't been in the function. She had a new baby. But um, um, now uh, the baby is born and is toddling. <coughs> She's finishing her school. <coughs> Excuse me. She would like to stay on the, the park board committee. She's uh, very intelligent and plugged in, and uh, I would um, uh, support her in that. Brandon would like to be uh, discharged, and so uh, that creates the opening <coughs> that I was hoping that we would uh, be able to fill with River Crumples. <coughs> She's um, had a lot of background in accounting, business management, and grant writing. Uh, you'll note that I add she's personable, energetic, and intelligent, and she's got very impressive skills and experience, which I believe uh, will serve the park board and its members well. So I'd like to submit uh, uh, the, her, uh, Mrs. Crumples, to you for your confirmatory uh, vote tonight, <coughs> if I could get it. And she is uh, willing to be at our next Park board meeting, which is Monday at six, as is Brianna Hanson. <coughs> she will definitely be there. <coughs> and um, I'm anticipating that that park board meeting, they will select a new chairman, which um, is, I believe, going to make a dramatic difference in the future of this park board. <coughs> so there you have it in a nutshell. <coughs> may, may I ask you, or all the other members, is Kelly? Staying and yes. um, Polo. And, and Jocelyn Polo and Ken, Okay. Mm -hmm. Just Brandon who would be replaced with. Um, yes. I personally know Deborah and I know she's really excited to be a part of the community and on one and on the park board. So so my okay. vote is for Deborah because she really wants to get involved in it. Okay, there's a supportive commentary. <coughs> Does anybody else know Debbie? And I think she's gone into the Ukraine. No, no, Ryan. Name, face, yeah. Well, I know it's a leap of faith again, uh, which I ask you quite often to engage in, but it's rare to have an individual uh, of her uh, energy and competency. So I would await council action. <clears throat> I'll make a motion for to have the mayor. Um, Move to approve. Move to approve. Approve the nomination. <laughs> approve the nomination for Miss Crumples on the park board. Okay, um, Mr. Parsons has submitted a motion to uh, uh, authorize the mayor to press ahead with the replacement of um, Deborah Crumples as a member of the City of Vegas Park Board. <coughs> Do we have a second? I second. Second by Mrs. Costello. Um, any other thoughts, concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Excellent. That motion is carried. I'm uh, excited about this. So, I'm excited that she has grant writing skills. Too. She is, uh, she's indicated she is going to go after money wherever she can find it. So, and we have $43,000 sitting there as uh, seed money from the retailers. <coughs> so uh, it's, there may be likely to something could emerge. It's exciting that the, there's three park board, previous park board people up here right now, yes. but it's exciting to know that we might could turn McMurphy Park into an actual uh, exactly. profit yeah. adventure because there's so much could go on down there. The water is on the edge ready to go. Um, we've got the power in now. We've got a beautiful park. It just needs someone to go down there. But don't you wish we could just do two things? Yes, why can't we do two things? We all want to be on the park board again. <laughs> 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 I would imagine, yeah, that's what action is. Yeah, that's what action is. Right, um, I hear you, honey. Uh, that would be fun. And, uh, 
uh, there are some interesting potential developments with regard to the water, so stay tuned on that. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then um, uh, item number five, council to discuss <coughs> code enforcement courtesy notices. <coughs> this was an addition uh, by our distinguished the new city council member, Castello, and uh, as an effort to um, uh, assist the city in uh, formulating a letter uh, that um, might reflect the yeah. compassion that um, I think yeah. we're feeling. So, uh, without further burden, my, my thought was when I did this was that we could just cross through it, you could add your own words, but at least it's a format to get started to possibly design something that would be um, a little friendlier. Okay. <clears throat> and then yeah. also there's room down here where you could attach the ordinance. Um, I would insert here that uh, this letter is going to emerge and regardless of what happens and your input is welcome. I don't okay. even know that. Well, I know that, we've, that, that the council passed it, what, what last month? Yeah. What, typo? Yeah. What does it say? 296. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, now this is, look, it yeah, says, no, it no, says, no, it no, says, it says, it says, it says, no, rough draft. Yes, poke and smile. Yes, poke and smile. And, of course, any such letter would be uh, filtered through our city attorney, of course, and to ensure that it have all of the... I think the uh, background should be like butterflies and mm -hmm. like... Uh, yeah, yeah, and I thought the same thing. But, kids, but, but kids this, this still, still does kind of... Yeah, kids, <laughs> it still does kind of sound okay. kind of like formal, I mean... Well, I think it appears a little bit formal, yet... Not threatening. Not threatening, and we are here. Uh, please respond, or just just some thoughts. Oh, yes, there's a please. Yeah. Oh. Yes, there's a please in there. Oh, there's two please. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I would maybe add that there's citizens that are willing to help if you don't. Oh, have the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I would add that that you know. This is help group. Mm -hmm. Are you pretty smarky? <laughs> no. That's another word that it's smarky. I like it. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, hey, this is what we want. We need to go feedback. We'll filter all this. I know that uh, we'd have to be somewhat uh, um, cautious uh, about um, putting uh, citizens in a position where they, if they did help, could be liable for damage or <coughs> injury, but uh, we can, all of this will go through the city attorney, so we'll make sure we address those issues. Any other thoughts? We could also add in there that um, if we don't hear anything or if we don't see any action in two weeks, a time frame. Put a yeah, time frame. Two weeks, a time frame, and then... Mm -hmm. Then what? That's what I need to know. Then, this, then there'll be a second courtesy letter. That's what we agree okay. on. Two right. nice letters. Right. Maybe not so nice the second time. So maybe if we didn't put the ordinance in the first time, we would add the ordinance the second time. And, and maybe it'll look a little okay. more threatening. And, and then would we give them a two week on the second notice? Two weeks on the well? second. And then what? And then you go with Mike. And then what we said <laughs> 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 Mike's letter. No, I want to be. I want to be clear because what I am thinking that you're saying and what you may be saying is some maybe something mm -hmm. different. So I want to be really clear here that that what we put together is what you mean. So like the second notice, you said if we don't hear from you in two weeks, then you can expect what. The notice of violation. The notice of violation. The notice of violation. The notice of violation. Yes. Then you okay. follow through because okay. that gives them a month right. to either ask for help or to come in and say, okay, right. you know, I'm, I'm working on this now. It might take me this long to do it. At least some kind of okay. communication. Okay. Um, if they need the help, ask for the help and we'll be there. Can we? And, and maybe in both of the letters, half this two week period is kind of time sensitive. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, time sensitive, yeah. mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. not in large, not in large capital letters, two weeks, but something to to say. 
going to get another one in two weeks, and then after that. Okay. Should we put an outline? This is what's going to happen. You're going to get another letter, and then after that letter, you're going to get the notice of violation, and then after that, you're going to cry. Maybe, maybe, in, the, maybe, maybe in the second letter, but the yeah, first one, let's just kind of stick with the pleases and the pleases. Step, please, step three, Mike. Let's step three is Mike. Oh, all right. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling the yang and the yang here. So somewhere in the midst of this, he said, okay. Can we use this letter for the sewer bills also? People that are not paying their sewer bills. <laughs> Now you're being advice. I'm not being snarky. I, <laughs> um, no, I, think this is, I think this is a good start to to uh, to helping us out, helping the community not look so so bad at, at us when we are asking them to clean up their yard. You know? yeah. This will make us look like nice, like we're nice and we we'll want to help them. We just want to get it taken. Because we are, and we do. Yeah, we are nice. <laughs> yes, we are nice. nice. Would we have an opportunity to see letter number three before it goes out? The notice of violation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've not I seen think that, I would, so I should like to see one of those. If the you council, can come and see a notice of violation any time I've got. We can send you one. Well, <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That was snarky. That was snarky. <laughs> Please don't. You and I can look eye to eye with Marcy. Okay. I think this is a great start. I think, I think this might smooth off some um, areas of discontent with the community, and um, I think this is going to be a really good step. And Mike does too. <laughs> not, not yet. Yes. Right? Okay. Oh, now you're being snarky. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, uh, all right. Then, um, uh, knowing that there is uh, there are circumstances and situations that we're receiving letters of, uh, of complaint about, and we say, I know you're well aware of them, as am I. <clears throat> and we'll uh, expedite this and to see if we can get something drafted before our next council meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty. I like that. <laughs> then uh, with that... Mr. Mayor, can I have a comment? comment? Yes. Everybody agree? Uh, I would just like to know if you're disregarding the letter from the ACLU about those ordinances. You don't seem to be worried about sending out the ordinances again for five hundred dollars per day for whatever it is, because these people still can't afford to pay that money. So <coughs> yeah. well, uh, I don't have any qualms about responding to that as a council. Good yeah. Um, I've read that ACLU letter a dozen times. I've talked to our city attorney about it, and um, for the life of us, we don't see any um, a, a particular declaration where the city needs to respond. It's just an opinion letter. So uh, I'm not uh, giving it a great deal of credibility myself, so no, we don't have any intention of responding unless they put something that's legally binding in it. Uh, so that's how I look at it. However, we have made some changes. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was going to say, we lowered our fee. The appeal fee. Uh, we're doing our letter. We're doing the courtesy letter. Two steps. Would, would we not, yeah, want, would we not want to communicate with them in any way? Is that something no. that would be... We could, but it could, if we use the attorney, then you know you're going to incur extra time on her part. And I, I don't think that at this point in time we need to bow to the mighty ACLU, and I don't see that derogatorily sure necessarily. Mayor, <laughs> can I give a report on the email that we received? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Um, Someone had notified the person who wrote the ACLU letter that they thought the city had written a response letter. And so the lady from the ACLU sent our attorney an, a letter, an email saying, I'm sorry, if you had sent us a response, then I haven't received it. I just wanted to you know, make sure that if you did send a response that you can reach me by email. And uh, our city attorney passed that along to us and 
let us know, and, and our city attorney responded by letting the lady at the ACLU know that yes, we received your letter. No, we haven't written a response letter, but you know the council has taken it into consideration and, and appreciates your input. Thank you, and sent it back to her. And the lady from the ACLU said, "Oh, okay, great, thanks." Yeah. So that was it. Really, so I, I don't think they're minutes, expecting so. a response from us. Uh, someone had notified her that she that they thought that we had sent a response. Um, when we had it, and so um, she was fine with the fact that we hadn't sent anything. Thank you. So that, 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 yeah. Hopefully that's okay. Good question. Uh, with that, so then uh, let's. Um, <coughs> so we're good. Then let's proceed with item number six. The council to consider city participation in the May Day and Fourth of July events. We already are with the 4th of July, right? Okay. We'll be budgeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 3,500. 3, 3, 3, it was less than last year. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it, I don't think it was supposed to be on there. Oh, well, okay. I have uh, Oh. Uh, because okay. um, uh, it uh, reflects uh, uh, events that uh, I think the council has in the past uh, uh, debated, might not be the right word, but. Um, uh, there was some more supportive energy as reflected in the monies allocated to one as opposed to the other. And I figured that if you're talking about the one, maybe you'd want to talk about the two of them. You don't have to, but I just put it in there in case you wanted to. <coughs> well, so, so cool. Yeah. Well, I think the Mayday Committee is just looking for a one time donation. We as a group feel like next year we'll be flying on our own and have a whole year to um, raise our money and, and be, you know, okay. This was just the first year that we kind of jumped out there and thought that we needed to, we needed a little seed money. Now, Mr. Parsons has loaned us his little handy dandy badge maker, which we're going to have a display on that, I hopefully, tomorrow morning at our meeting. Mm -hmm. We're meeting tomorrow, mm -hmm. nine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, meeting tomorrow, nine o'clock to the to the community um, at the community center. <coughs> we had to move it from my kitchen. Too many people were showing. Twenty two steps <laughs> and twenty two <laughs> steps. <laughs> um, so I don't know what to say other than this is a very large community event. Well attended, has been going on for sixty plus years. Um, we want to keep it going on, so we are just requesting, possibly, that um, my fellow council people will vote to maybe give us a little seed money. We were thinking $400 would make us really happy, and um, obviously, I said last meeting, um, I identified two weeks of uh, deputy clerk salary that didn't get used in that little interim. Um, possibly. Um, um, that um, may not be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But. Um, and I don't want to take any of Reggie's money. If we were thinking of taking, if we were thinking of taking four hundred dollars out of Reggie's money, that I don't, I'm not going to go there. So, Fourth of July is. Yeah, I don't know if Reggie knows that his budget is thirty-five hundred. Yes, and that, and I don't think he does either. So I'm not so going to be the one to tell him. No, 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 no. Jason will tell him. Jason has to do it. Okay, I'll tell him. Those people have enough issues at home. Well, okay. Well, so, I know Mike, Mike, Mike has already said his uh, thoughts on it, and I appreciate those. I like honesty. I don't know. I like the $400 are much better than the 800 that was mentioned last time. Well, we just, it was just a range. I don't believe, I don't, I, did I say 800? You, I think you said four to 800. Oh. I, was, I, think I, I was always, when somebody says a number, I always grab top. the top one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we would be really, really thrilled with 400. We have gotten some donations as well, so right. we're able to um, work with that as well. And Who's the group of eight? Uh, oh, there's more than that now. Oh, okay. 
Nine. We, we're all three on it, and we alternate so not to have conflict. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm going to be there tomorrow. Yes, yeah, Jason's there tomorrow. <laughs> and I won't okay. be there. All right, you're rotating. We're rotating. Well, that's a well-heeled group. Yeah. Uh, um, we have uh, members of the little crane. Uh, Anita and Jessica mm -hmm. are there. Um, Mrs. Rogers is on it. Um, uh, one of the storm employees. Doug is on it. Um, <clears throat> Andrew's on it. So, so we have a, we have a big group that's growing daily. It's legitimate. It's real. It's, yes, it's legitimate. It's real. Okay. Yeah, well, you'll see buttons being uh, sold, in, in hopefully the first week of February. We're we're actually taking um, a doing a contest at the school <clears throat> where we're trying to get them to design our buttons for us, oh, and cool. so we're doing a contest at the school right now. Hmm. So they should be turned in by next Friday. So. We should have. We should know what the buttons are going to look like by then. So we're pretty excited about that too. Yeah. Do you have a theme? I'm just wondering. Is there a theme? Um, Cinco de Mayo, May Day, 2018. Oh, because it's going to be on May. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Lots of tacos. Yeah. Cinco de Mayo. It is on the fifth of May, so it's kind of big. So it's big. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, if 400 were the amount, I'm quite confident. I'm quite confident um, we can find 400 in the sure budget somewhere. So I'll make a motion that we find $400 to send to, to give to the May Day celebration. No, I'll, I'll second that. Well, all right, before I even have to say let's do this. We'll embrace this. Then uh, uh, any other commentary? Just make note of my heart was soft today. <laughs> we'll make that that way right in a minute. My heart, yeah, yeah. That was smart. <laughs> You're all right, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, with that, uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Wait, did we opposed? have a second? Yeah, we just oh, wanted to. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, it, it passed unanimously. So, we'll have that. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, then um, let's um, uh, rapidly move ahead with item number seven. <coughs> Council to re revisit proposals for the limb branch disposal uh, the challenge that we have been wrestling with for a long time. <coughs> so I know uh, Mr. Parsons was recontacted. I, I'll let you. Uh, yeah. Um, a couple days ago, I was recontacted by this John at uh, Jags Trucking, um, asking what was going on and what I thought. I told him um, the other offer that we had come to City Hall, and he said that he would do fifteen hundred. Um, so he would give us fifteen. Give us fifteen hundred. So um, he will haul away the brush. Uh, in trade for the mini excavator, an additional fifteen hundred. This reads kind of weird, so I, I want to. Uh, yeah, we uh, might want to verify that he means giving. Because initially, if you look in the earlier, he had offered to take the brush pile, and we can charge haul us it for a thousand dollars if you yeah. give us the broken excavator. So I clarified and I said, "What if we don't give you the broken excavator? What are you going to charge us?" And he said, sixty-five hundred. And so this time he's saying we can haul, haul it away, and take the excavator, but we'll give you fifteen hundred. That's the way it sounded on the phone, and I can <coughs> verify that. Obviously, we're not making any big decisions. The second portion of it, proposal two, I called him this morning just because as I was driving down to Vancouver, I was thinking about what you had said earlier, and. Did you um, see there? Yeah. yeah, so I thought maybe he might have a connection for the barrier things, and that um, was what he came up with. I think that um, the branch area out there is a huge convenience for the city, or for the people of the city. I also think that it should be able to make a little bit of revenue and still be a convenience for the citizens. Of, of not just Vader, but surrounding areas, because Ryder would, they wouldn't have to go all the way to uh, Centralia. They could 
drop their branches and stuff off here. What's that? They don't have to go to Centralia. They have their own thing. They burn right there. They can burn. They have a huge. Oh, do they? Where's that at? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's to them. <laughs> so, but, but I think I think it's a great idea for the limb area to make money. Mm -hmm. Leona and I's idea of the five dollars to drop your stuff off, and then you can come back in the spring and pay us five dollars, and we'll load you back up with mulch. Yeah, and that's, that's good. Along those lines is where these barriers. Um, would come into effect so that if we had the barriers there, the branches could come in, we could rent a chipper, um, and this could be done hopefully by volunteers, could come out, chip it, shoot it straight into the, the bin area, and then, um, like you say, in the spring, the mulch comes and they charge them, charge them to get mulch. So... Um, and as long as somebody's like guarding it. Yeah, did you talk, think about the guarding, guarding the gate? Well, yeah. I've, we, uh, you had mentioned somebody out there. I was thinking of somebody out there also, but um, it, you know, this is, this is so much in the brainstorming stage because, I mean, there's a lot of detail to come up with. But um, I could see us building a little bus shack or little shack right out by there and uh, for somebody to sit in and then on the weekends or whatever you know we set it up certain times mm -hmm. and uh, have it the first Friday or first Saturday of the month or something yeah, have it over four. Four. a couple, yeah, days a couple weekends yeah, if we don't keep somebody month. there during that time we're going to end up with the yeah. RV in the we're we're have have no have definitely that. definitely needs somebody there I think that um, another idea would be, um, hey, this weekend I'm getting ready to do some tree limbs and call the city and say, hey, I'm, get, I'm going to be wanting to use your disposal site this weekend. And so we can set it up by appointment. Um, but that leaves a volunteer not knowing when they have to be down there. We have a specific time, a date setting, time. a specific time. You know, we schedule the volunteers and we're not on a call basis. And I mean, yeah. I don't think we're then they can schedule around our schedule instead of us trying to schedule yeah. around them. Yeah, so there's, like I said, there is a lot, um, but this gives us the groundwork of what it would run to get those bays put in, at least. And, uh, and then we have to figure out how much we would be charging to dump, and how much does the dump charge to dump branches there. Um, so, I don't know. We can do that research. <clears throat> yeah. So, Mike, these blocks, are these the same size of blocks as we have out at McMurphy Park? I am not sure what's out at McMurphy Park. Are those the, the well, ones yeah, that are on the road? Oh, yeah, they're no, they're, they're not K-rails. Uh, no, these square are the square blocks. They look like Legos. Yeah, and that they stack on top of each other. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like uh, um, if you Spencer's, uh, Spencer's excavating mm -hmm. or gravel on the side of I-5, there's also the other one um, oh, by McDonald's. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, they're they have they're just square blocks that they stack on top of one another and interlock. And uh, the cool part about them is they just sit; they don't get glued down. So we'd be able to move them, change them around, or whatever later down the road. Yeah, the owner will just go pick them up and move them for us. But if we don't have an excavator, how are we going to move them? Um, oh, that, that does that does lead me to to the getting rid of the excavator. Also, I think the amount that we've not had it, and the amount that we had it when it was working, that we used it. Um, I think renting would be one. I don't know if it costs us more insurance to have the excavator, um, but every time we if we rent, what's that? I just said that's a good question. Yeah. Um, every time we rent, we know it's going to run, and if it doesn't run, they send us out a new one. And 
you know, I rented that excavator to do that one house and it was, I think it was $1,300 for the whole week. And you can get a lot done in a week with an excavator. So, um, you know, and like I've said before, I just bought a tractor and it don't run. So I have to rent a tractor anyway. So to me, it's just easier and cheaper just to rent it. And when you break it, they can fix it. And get you a gentleman that lives right around here? He's like $85 an hour or something. Is, what's his name? I think he's on your board. At the oh, you're talking about Mark. Mark. Does he have an excavator? Oh, or is it Mark a tractor? Um, yeah. Is that an excavator that he oh, has? does he have an excavator? I don't know what he has. When, he, when we hire a not. person, we have yeah. contractor issues that are different than if we have our own employee do it. <coughs> and he's not licensed in Bond Index. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have that's, that's, work. that's an issue we yeah. have. Even if he volunteered to do it, that's still not a, that's still not a go? If he did it for free? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We have to check on that. We have to check what, on what that. is the use of our excavator? Is we have all of the all of the stuff gone by this guy, and then we get the we rent the chipper. What would be the use of the excavator? Ditches. Oh, you're talking yes. about other city use. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just I'm random. still. I'm, I'm at the. I'm down we, yeah. at the limb pile. Oh, yeah. Right. You're all over town. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. I see that. Yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of very limited excavator. You would know if you need the excavator, yeah. you could rent it. Yeah. You'd know in advance if you're going to do that. Well, we also know that there's a lot of backlog stuff that needs to be done with yeah, an there's excavator. A lot. There's a lot. So, so <clears throat> let me inject here in this discussion that uh, you'll recall in the previous council meetings that we've been working with an individual, Mr. Rayfield, who. Um, um, and we've got an amended voluntary correction agreement that involves him repairing this uh, excavator, which he claims he can do, uh, that would uh, uh, perhaps um, um, <coughs> obviate uh, his uh, penalties that uh, he's in somewhat with, which we're not talking $500,000, as you know. But um, anyway, that's part of this um, uh, discussion. The, if we do embrace this strategy where the excavator goes to this individual, then that eliminates that little project for Mr. Baker. But the, we don't know of his certification and his ability. Yeah, the concern I have with having um, someone working on the excavator that one isn't licensed or bonded or what kind of guarantee insured? What kind of guarantee do we have if if it doesn't work? Then what? Yeah, you know, there's nobody to go back to fix the excavator if the person that um, just did the as a citizen just fixed it. Well, I don't think last time it got repaired, it never went back on that that individual that repaired no, it. Last well, the person and who repaired so, you know, it last time was. A city employee. You're right. So there's no cost incurred. But well, in this case, where he's well, compensating the city, he could fix it for two days, which has been the track record of that excavator. It works for about three hours. And then it we have a, a, an individual with experience here. Do you want to make a comment? Do you want yeah. to make a comment? Well, I was in discussion with John today, our city employee, famous, and he was of the thought that we should keep it also. So, and that's been brought up several times in the past, too. Mm -hmm. Well, my thought is, is all of the years that we've been talking about this excavator sitting up there dead. It's been sitting. Um, we've never actually had an excavator doctor come and look at it. Yes, we had, yeah. Have yes, we had yeah. a professional yeah. person Paul, come Paul, Paul. and tell us what was wrong? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, more than once, actually. So, does Jason Rayfield know Everybody yeah. thinks they know what's wrong with it. Well, that's why an excavator professional would know. Well, uh, Paul, uh, who uh, employs Mr. Rayfield, uh, personally came out to try and fix it while we had it in the shop. And uh, he claimed that he was an expert in this sort of thing. This is made in South or North Korea. It's a 
Well, we I'm don't so have the instruction. I, I, I love Paul. He's my mechanic. Oh, me um, but excavator specialty people work on hydraulics and, well, and heavy equipment and not from from looking at it, it's not the it's not that issue that this thing has. It's the it's the it's engine the itself. It's the yeah, it's it's engine. It's yeah. Yeah, I've heard everything. So well, it sounds like if document. if Jason can fix it. Then it'll be worth a lot more than the fifty five hundred dollars, and we can make a decision on whether we want to sell it while while we're money ahead. At that time, but sell I it in that three hour right. window when it's running. I think the concern that <laughs> Joe, Joe, I think the concern that the mayor was stating was that if we do that and we allow that to be considered Jason's payment for his fines, but then it turns out it really wasn't didn't fix it. it. Then what do we do? Then he got his fines paid, but he didn't really perform the service. Of the, you know what I'm saying? That's what my so that's the question: Is do we want that? Are we do we want to cross those two projects? To me, to each other? I think that we need to keep this totally. What's that? What's that? Why don't you finish your comment? Oh yeah, finish, and I'll wait. I'll wait till you finish. So to me, we need to keep that totally separate. We've got a person that um, publicly said he wants to bankrupt the city and in writing, and now we're going to have him work on our equipment. To me, that just doesn't make any sense. Well, well my comment is you're going to waiver the fees over the repair of a track hoe. It's in negotiation. In, in, in negotiation, I'm sorry, right. let me rephrase it. In negotiation... And I'm not getting a lot of cooperation yeah, in working with him. So this is not an easy decision. I think Jason's come a long way mm -hmm. um, in just the last couple of months. And he's come to the meetings, he's polite, he interacts. Mm -hmm. He's said how many times that he loves his town, this is where mm -hmm. he wants to raise his son. I think becoming a daddy has made him a better person. Um, you know, he's thrilled that he's got people that are willing to help him over on the property. I, I think he's come a long, long way, and I think he's sincere when he wants to go fix that piece of equipment. I would echo that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know it's awkward when we're talking at a city council meeting about uh, a person's integrity and such, but... Uh, yeah, but he's not here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was smart. That's uh, key. Yeah, that's all. No, but um, I'm willing to work with him. And I, I believe him until proven otherwise. So well, we maybe we should of... maybe we should go with Joe's thought then and let but Jason fix, fix the excavator. Can you always can you add on there that if he's unable to do this then it's all voided? Yeah. Did that solve the issue? Yeah, I think we can do that. And we'll get Jennifer involved. Yeah. 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 Do you think he'd be willing to do that? What if he puts all this time into it and it still doesn't fix it and then he gets no fees paid in? <laughs> I don't know if he'd be willing to take that chance. Well, well, fix it if he well that's, fix true. It. Yeah. that's true. We won't know until we right. ask. Okay. So, yeah. I think okay. he'd jump at the opportunity to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he would try even harder to fix it. Okay. Well, in the, in the meantime, what are we going to do about all of the brush? Same thing we've been doing. Let Mother Nature work on it. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah, it we, we, do realize, we do realize that in about a month and a half, there's going to be a lot of people down there at that gate. Yeah, but um, and the gate's there and the sign is up. And, yeah. so and then they'll start dumping it this yeah. side of the gate. <laughs> well, they're on my side of town. Yeah, we, yeah but um, no, it's not been... Um, the gate has worked, okay. so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But. Mm. All right, then we have a, a direction. Sure. We will pursue that and we'll keep you advised. <clears throat> well, we have a direction with the excavator, right? Yes. I think we're, we're going to talk to Jason, and the we're going to hold yet. the other okay. uh, options in abeyance until we find out about that. But we'll do it as quickly as we can. Okay. How about that? Mm. All right. <clears throat> Then, so well, believe it or not, we've gone through our seven agenda items. Unless somebody has anything else. Oh, wait. Public comment. Oh. <laughs> not my fault, along the. What was that? Public comment. Oh.
So last week you said it was the Lions Club that had the donation. So is it the Masons no. now? No, no. Masons. It was it's, always Masons. Been, it's always been the Masons. It's the Masons, okay. okay. And they're not willing to give it to the school because the school is being held at the church? No, the, the, because the, the school was supposed to be up and running in uh -huh. September, November, and yep. it never happened, and it never happened, and it never happened. The guy, the guy had the stuff in his, in his house. Okay. He's tired of looking at it. Okay. And so he's going to put it to an, another and give it, give it all to another okay. school. So even though the kids are in school at this at the church right now. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 All right. Well, let me say the thought. It's unfortunate that it didn't work out the way he hoped it would, but. Um, that is life, and maybe there will be another generous individual out there with some compassion and pure string attached to such donation. Do I have a question? Yeah. Why can't it still go to the children of the church? I don't understand the problem. The church? That's the problem. Yeah. They're gotcha. temporarily using the church. Instead of the school, which I don't see as a problem. Do you, does the Masons have a problem yeah. with the church? Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. well, it's not the so church that's getting the supplies, it's the children it's that are being, being right. held in the church. Okay. And uh, the, the, church, the church is not going to have anything to do with uh, the donations Masons are going to do. Well, so, so it's not, well, this is what we want to avoid. <coughs> obviously, yeah. it may not be the Masons, it's an awfully interesting bias there, but mm -hmm. who are we to judge? So, um, all right. Yeah, yeah, with that, uh, 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 excuse me, pardon me, uh, pardon me, uh, we're out of order. Okay. Um, for the council, character. this is not intended to be an cross-examination based on public comment. So, with that caveat, I am going to pick this down. Okay. Um, the city council may be closed at 8.07 p.m. I just want to know. Thank you.